Thy kingdom come, you sang so beautifully. Offering that wonderful phrase within the Lord's Prayer, a request, a desire, an expression. Thy kingdom come. Are you ready to live the kingdom life? Are you ready for something amazing to unfold within your life? Well, come on, let's live it. Let's do it together, all right? Let's journey on this wonderful experience of living the kingdom life. But wait a minute. Do we even know what that is? Have we really thought about what it is before we consent to saying, yes, I'm ready to live the kingdom life. I'm ready to be in the kingdom. I'm ready to welcome it all and experience it to its fullest. But if we don't understand it, how can we acknowledge it or say yes to it? Well, Jesus, speaking to a group of people, asked them, what is the kingdom of God like? Well, they all came up with different answers. Some said, well, you know, the kingdom of God, it's going to be when the Messiah comes and will rule and reign on this earth. And certainly that will be the setting up a new kingdom, a new political structure. Certainly that's what the kingdom of God is all about. For they were constantly looking within the physical world and the literal expression of a kingdom. Jesus said, let me illustrate what the kingdom's all about. Let me show it to you in a story. Let me give it to you in a parable. I'm going to make it really simple for you. I'm going to describe exactly what the kingdom of God is like. It's like a mustard seed. Now, you can imagine how dumbfounded they were. Whoa, wait a minute. Our earthly kingdom, this kingdom that's going to rule over Israel, over the Palestinians, over the whole environment of this world, of this nation that we call our home, and eradicate the Romans and set us free and liberate it. It's a mustard seed? Really? You can imagine their expressions because we do kind of think for a moment, Jesus, you're likening it unto a mustard seed. Now, along with it in this beautiful passage of scripture, Jesus is explaining to them, as you read today, that the mustard seed being that seed planted will grow and expand to become like a tree where birds may rest. Although people knew that mustard seed trees are not only the largest of trees, it was an expression of the expansion and growth that would happen. Aha, now we understand the kingdom of heaven is a place of growth and expansion. If the kingdom of heaven is likened under the power of the mustard seed planted to spring forth from something oh so small to something oh so large, it means that there's expansion within our life when we are embracing the kingdom life, there's growth, there's change, there's transition. The soul, everything within it is expanding outward and with greater understanding and greater truth and awareness within our lives. So when we say, thy kingdom come, what we're really saying is, I'm ready to expand. I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to mature. I'm ready to move to some higher ground as we sang today. I'm ready to move on up to a new place of understanding within my life. I am ready to become even more enlightened and more aware. You know, in our world today, quite often people said, I've been going to church for years. You know, I went to Sunday school when I was kids. I don't really need these classes. I don't really need this experience because, you know, you know, I've had it plenty in my life. Truly, I, as a minister's kid, would say, I went to church at least four times a week growing up. Uh, there was Sunday morning service, Sunday evening service. There was Wednesday night prayer meeting. There was Thursday night Bible study. And amongst many other things, I would say, certainly I've done my time in the house of God. Certainly I could, couldn't I take a break? Yeah, you would think so. Uh-huh. But no, you know what? I've grown up with this wonderful understanding that the life is always about a continual growth and expansion. It's never stopping. It doesn't come to an end. There's no moment in the realm of God where we'd say, I know it all. I've got it all. I understand it all. Because there's ever a, a wonderful journey of ever unfolding something new and fresh within the journey of our lives. I've been a pastor for 41 years. And I find sometimes this day, this moment to be the freshest, the most uh, uh, vibrant and full of experience and of joy. Because every day is unfolding something new. That's the journey of coming into the kingdom life. That's when we say, thy kingdom come. Oh, let my life expand. Let my soul grow. Let maturity come to me. Let me seek and understand truth. Let my eyes be open to all that is there because the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the realm of God is simply an inner consciousness. 
an inner awakening to that which is there within you. In our world today, there's a lot of people, I'm looking and searching outside. I'm looking here. I'm looking there. New classes and some new trends and what's out there spiritually and not realizing that what's to be found is to be found right within and to awaken this divine presence that is of that spark within you, that we awaken to it and it ignites and it's like it catches on fire and the tender uh, uh, twigs in kindling and it ignites to being a roaring blaze within our lives. That's what's described when we awaken to this inner consciousness to say, I am aware of this and I'm more aware of this than ever before. And I'm conscious of this now and I'm even more conscious every day. So it's not just to say I'm aware now and that's it, but I'm aware and I'm wanting to be more aware. I'm conscious, but I want to be more conscious. That's what the kingdom life is all about. It's about growing in our awareness of this presence of God within us. Would you do me a favor? I'd like you to just put your hands over your chest like this, just kind of wrapping, caressing, holding yourself as if you're embracing yourself. Give yourself a good hug. You know, feel that. And now in this moment with this wonderful embrace, I want you to feel the presence of God. I want to allow yourself to feel as if God is wrapping around you arms of comfort and strength. Feel that love of God right now. Take a moment to feel, I'm feeling loved. Give yourself a squeeze. I'm feeling loved. I'm feeling this presence. It's right there within me. I'm feeling grace. Grace is that unmerited favor that God is always seeing and making a way for our highest and best no matter what. I'm feeling forgiveness. Oh, I feel so good to be forgiven of all aspects of my life. No matter what shortcoming I've made or created in my journey, I am forgiven. And along with that, feel the peace. Oh, and feel the joy that is there within. You see, that's the journey of coming into the kingdom. Now, you can let go of that embrace because you all look so good, like you're ready to fall asleep being hugged so tightly and caressed so beautifully. Uh, and what a beautiful way to just love yourselves and to feel the very love of God at work within our lives. Because the more that we are aware of this presence within, the more we grow our faith. Now, here's what's so important. As your pastor, I'm really passionate about you having a vibrant, active faith life. There's a lot of things that churches can be known for. Churches can be known for their compassion. Churches can be known for their doctrine. Churches can be known for their choirs. Churches can be known for their music programs. Churches can be known for their children's ministries. Churches can be known for their outreach to in global missions. One of the greatest things is the body of believers is known for their faith. Their faith. Because faith is what's igniting and moving the world around us and transforming the world. It's that faith of this I know that I know that I know. This I believe that I believe. This is what I hold dear. This is what is truly shaping my reality in the world. Because the more we're aware of this presence within, the more we grow our faith, the more we grow the kingdom. Now, the kingdom, well, in a worldly, in an earthly context, the kingdom, the boundaries of the kingdom were always set by the realm of where those people recognized the king. So as the king began to, armies began to invade take over new territory, expand boundaries. Those within those boundaries would acknowledge this is the king. This is our new leader. We're under his guidance. We're under his direction. So it is. As we're saying, I want to live the kingdom life. I want to grow and expand. My hunger is there to say, I want to expand the boundaries of the kingdom within me. I want to say there's new areas where I've turned over that the divine is in full control. The divine within me is unfolding some new things and expanding, taking into some new territories. As I'm living the kingdom life, which is ever expanding and ever growing outward. How beautiful it is to experience this because as we grow the power of our believing, we actually move to new levels. Now, one of the worst things we can do as a body of believers is to stay at the same place and never grow or change. We can get stuck in ruts. We can say, oh, I know it all, and I just get stuck. And so what happens is, you know what? We lose that freshness. We lose that hunger for the things of God. 
We lose that, that excitement and enthusiasm. I can tell you, you know, the first time I had some great spiritual discoveries in my life, I was so saying, so excited. I said, I want more. I want more. I, I love this. Aha, this truth that was told to me. I love this awakening. I, I'm just so amazed. I can't wait to tell everybody about it, but I want something more. Because what I had yesterday was great, but what's fresh for today? I want to expand. I want to grow. And I want my faith to grow. So the symbol is that the small seed of the mustard seed, it could grow and expand, and your faith, too, can grow and expand to become something even greater. In the story of Jesus healing an epileptic, he uses the mustard seed once again to describe another aspect. The mustard seed symbolizing the kingdom within, its growth and expansion but also in relationship to the development and expansion of our faith within us. For the disciples constantly wanted to say, Jesus, we tried to heal this person. Why couldn't we heal? Why couldn't we do it? And Jesus said, well, because you need faith. In other words, if you have faith, apparently Jesus acknowledging that they didn't have faith, they weren't using their faith, they weren't igniting their faith, they weren't engaging their faith, if you have faith, for truly I say unto you, as a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here, and it shall be removed. And nothing will be impossible to you if you have faith. Now, it's interesting in our world today, we want to say, Jesus, you do it for me. Jesus, you take the wheel. Jesus, I I'm going to pray to you, and I want you to do the things for me. When Jesus was turning to the disciples and said, there's great things you can do. But you, you have to have the faith. So it was an invitation to have the faith of Jesus. And so often we get caught in faith in Jesus. When the invitation is to say, Jesus saying, if you have faith, if you have faith like I've illustrated, if you have faith like I've demonstrated, if you've had faith like I've taught you, if you engage this, Suddenly, then, there will be miraculous working for you. It's the faith of Jesus. And we're so confused and say, well, no, it's got to be faith in Jesus. And that Jesus is going to do everything for me, and Jesus will do it all, and I'll do nothing. And I really don't have to have much faith. And yet we see it illustrated over and over again. That's not going to work. Because if you don't have it, if it's not engaged in you, then what's missing is that illustration that the kingdom but has not been acknowledged within you. You have to acknowledge the kingdom of God, the presence of God within you, and it starts there. And when you begin to say, I am full of it. Yeah, that's great. I'm full of it. Uh-huh. I'm full of the divine. I'm full of God. I'm full of all those wonderful blessings. I'm full of goodness. I've inherited all. It's all mine, and I am full of it. How wonderful to feel and know that. Because it's that kind of faith says, I'm full of the divine presence. And it's work, work within me. So consequently, then I can step out in faith. I can speak in faith. I can visualize in faith. And I can begin to claim in faith. And I begin to say, and so it is. And actually mean it. I can say, and so it is. Which means, done deal. Wrap it up. Let's go home. It's all finished. We don't even, let's not even discuss it anymore. It's done. It's an amen. Amen. It's finished. And to come to that kind of faith is so engaging and so powerful for our lives. Because what happens then is that we begin to move to a wonderful place where we expand beyond illusion and understand what reality is. We so often get caught up in a world of illusion. That's the not-so-real world. We say, wait a minute, my world is real all around me. But let me tell you, we get caught up in living in the world of illusions, ideas that we think are true, but they're not really true at all. Such as sometimes we may say that God is good and generous and wanting us to prosper. That's real. But we live in a world of illusion that says, wait a minute, I think God is withholding. And sometimes God is generous, but not always. So the illusion is that I really can't claim God's goodness. But the reality is you can't. The illusion in our life is that uh, we are separated from God. But the reality is that God will never leave us nor forsake us. You see where we can kind of live and embody all these illusions, these 
thoughts we've been taught or we think that are not really real. And then we find that the illusion is that we can have lots of things to fear. And most of all, we need to be afraid of God and fear God. And yet we understand that there is nothing to be feared in the sense of terror. Certainly that word can mean to be reverenced or to be with respect. But there's nothing to be feared in the sense of I'm afraid of or terrified of. You see, we can live in this world of illusion until we awaken to the wonderful truth of God within us that says, wow, the divine is there within me. And my faith is so strong, I can now see my world from the view of reality, not from illusion. Illusion is this crazy, muddled, mucky thing that kind of flows that makes us buy into the mirage of a world around us. I lived in the edge of the Sahara Desert for a while in the land called Turkana in Kenya. And there on the edge of the Sahara Desert, temperatures could be 130 degrees in the afternoon. Trust me, in the afternoon, it's not time to go sunning or lay out and try to get a tan. You would be fried. Uh, so it was one of those places where you got up early in the morning, just before sunrise, to accomplish anything, and then went to bed and tried to sleep the whole day until just before sundown so you could exist within the extreme desert temperatures. But let me tell you there, as the sun would shine on the Sahara Desert and you would look out into the horizon, you would see all kinds of illusions, mirage. I swear, there's a lake out there. Can we go swimming? Come on. I am so hot. It's 130 degrees. You're not. Please, let's get in the car. Let's drive out to that lake. It's gorgeous. I see it glistening in the sun. It's not really real. It looks like it. It's a mirage. You see the reflection on the desert sand is playing a game with you. Let me tell you this. It's the same way in our spiritual life. Where there's a lot of things where the world is playing a game with us. We think these things are real. They're not. What's really real is the truth of God. God's love will never leave you nor forsake you. That's real. God's love is there for everyone. That's real. The illusion is that God is separating and God is there for some and not for others. That God shows favors. And these are all illusions that we've created in the world that somehow then we want to say, well, this is my reality. I've been living in a world of separation. I've been living in a world where there's not a sense of unity and oneness. I've been living in all these. You're right. We've been living with a lot of mirages. They're just simply games being played within our physical being. So it is that the real is the inner world of the kingdom of God. Often, sometimes we say, well, wait a minute. I can't accept that. You know, we struggle, we wrestle, and that's okay. I want to tell you, it's okay to say, I can't always accept everything that's being presented because I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm stretching. And sometimes I hear things that, whoo, you just rocked my boat, Pastor. You know, I have to tell you this, though. That's my job. My job is to rock your boat. My job is to not allow you to be comfortable in your spiritual life, to be content, but to present new things that challenge you to give you something to think about during the week ahead. Because otherwise, what would you do? You'd say, well, you know, I'm just all content with everything. My boat is sailing smooth. My spiritual life is all there. I'm here to rock your boat and present you some ideas, thoughts that help you to think in new ways, not what to think, but for you to think in new ways about your spiritual expansion and growth within your own life. So sometimes people say, you know, and I don't know if I can embrace all these truths and uh, I don't know if I can really uh, accept all these ideas that God's within me or that uh, the divine is flowing through me or that God even wants to prosper in me or that God really loves me. There's a lot of stuff and that's okay, but wrestle with it, engage it. I'm going to rock your boat, but I'm going to allow you to let you know that I won't let your boat tip over. <laughs> I'll be there for you as it rocks. I'm going to help you through the storm of your questioning and your wrestling in your life. Because Jesus made this very inter interesting statement about faith. He said, according to your faith, it will be done to you. According to the growth and expansion of this mustard seed within you. According to how much faith you allow it to put into act. To the degree, to the level of that you allow this to happen within you. 
according to your perception in life, is what he's saying. You know what? We all may perceive things differently. And how important it is to have the spiritual perception that you can see deep within. How many of you have seen these kind of graphics that are out there and they say hidden within the graphic, if you look closely, you'll discover a number or something hidden with all the digital dots. And you have to look closely and your eye has to adjust and you have to focus a little bit more. And your perception changes and suddenly you go, aha, I see it now. I see it through this illusion. I see it clearly. So it is that when we understand that our faith is this ability to have a clear perception, and we're working on that. You may say, I can't always perceive it. I can't always accept it, but I'm going to work on it. I'm going to allow everything to grow and expand. That requires us to be open, open. Really a big challenge within our life is that sometimes we again come to this place as mature people. I think everyone in this room has written received an age of maturity, I think. No, uh, any children here? No, I think we're good, okay? Uh, some of us may act like children, but okay, I think we're good. Uh, you see, what it is is we uh, come to this age where we say, I, can, I want to see, I want to perceive, I want to know. I want it to be done according to me in a wonderful way that I am able to grow and expand. Now, faith is something that happens in the individual when he is open, when he's ready. I love little kids here. Quite often, they're very open to all kinds of things. And somehow in life, we lost that openness. And we get kind of jaded and we get closed in and we become less open to things. And again, we become more, uh, shall we say, sh willing to shut off anything new or not interested in the journey of you. But faith is something that happens in the individual when you're open and your consciousness is ready. Now, here's a key thing in our life. Getting your consciousness, your mind, ready. Ready for the things of God. Ready to expand. Ready to grow. If it's not ready, and let me tell you, the scriptures echo this word over and over again. You know, we get caught up in the word rapture. And let me tell you this, the word rapture is not even in the Bible. There's a lot of people preaching rapture, and it's not even there. But ready is. Big difference here, because I want you to understand that what we must do is get ready for the expansion within our lives. Get ready and allow our consciousness to get ready for this growth and development within our lives. And that's by an openness that says, I'm willing, I'm willing to try. I'm willing to experience, you know. How many of you have said, uh, you know, I've never tasted X, Y, and Z or some Chinese food or Thai food or something. And I'm not going to, I know I don't like it. Well, are you open to trying? No, no, I'm not. I just know I won't like it. And how true that is. We find so many people we go to dinner with and go, have you even tried it? Nope, nope, nope. But you know you don't like it? Yeah, I know I don't like it. Uh, they're not open, are they? And so it is, we have to say, have you tried? Have you tried the things of God that are presented in the realm of truth? Have you tried stepping out in faith? Have you tried believing? Have you tried saying, and so it is? Have you tried living every day from the sense of I visualize and I claim that which I visualize, I see my miracle already manifested, and I'm so grateful. Have you tried it? Because the more you try it, you go, "Woo, this really works. This is true. I, I, I think I like it. I tried it, you know? So suddenly when you try something, you discover, wait a minute, maybe I do like this. So it is that we understand that our consciousness must be ready. We have to have an openness. Now, Paul refers to this experience, calling it justification by faith. Ah, we hear these churchy words thrown out to us periodically. And we're like, what is justification? What do you mean by that, that word? You know, what does that mean for us? Justification means to be open and receptive to God by faith. This openness and receptiveness, I am justified by faith. As I'm open, by faith, as I'm open by believing, I know that things are happening. That's why we say we treat and move our feet. We treat in a prayer treatment, treating our doubt, treating our fear. That's called prayer treatment. We treat it. And what do we do next? Move our feet. But people say, well, which way do I move my feet? Do I go this way? Do I go that way? What do we, we treat and move our feet by faith. 
that says, I trust the Lord is going to lead and direct my path and it's going to turn me this way or turn me that way because I know God's going to be making the way for me. So I, by faith, I am justified. By faith, I'm brought into this sense of openness and receptive. And Paul says this is a very free gift is spoken of in the New Testament. It seems to that, therefore, this is not the result of any kind of personal effort, but it seems to happen when we stop personal effort. Oh, now let me see. You know, some of us work on stuff too much. I want to tell you this. A spiritual life, though, can be described as challenging, is a whole lot easier than sometimes we make. Sometimes we put so much effort into things and not just let it be. Let it happen. Let it unfold. Oh, but we stress and we work at it and we massage our prayer requests and we believe it and we wrestle with it and we struggle with things over and over again. And really what it's all about is that uh, understanding that it will happen when it happens. And when we allow this place to come that our faith will grow, it will happen when it happens. Your faith will grow as you not work at it, struggle with it. Oh, it's just too difficult. But begin to just let it happen. Do it. Now, let's just think about the example given to us in the Bible of Peter getting out of the boat. Seeing Jesus walk on the water and Jesus calls to him. Do you think he deliberated and struggled? Do you think he wrestled with this? Do you think he thought, contemplated and thought, oh, wait a minute, where does the first foot go? How do I step out of a boat? How do I do this? I'm not even sure this is even worked. You know, it happened as he let it happen. But when he stopped letting it happen, when he began to wrestle with it, when he began to sit back, try to figure it out, when we're trying to think about how you walk on water, how you do all those things, he began to sink. This is the illustration that says, if you just let it happen, it happens. If you step out in faith and just walk in faith, it happens. It unfolds for you and it begins to grow and expand within your heart and your life. Peter had to embrace this open mind in his journey as an apostle. How many of you remember the story of Peter being confronted with a vision, of falling asleep in the upper room in an upper place on a rooftop experience? There he sees a blanket fall come descend before him. And there is all of this non-kosher food, all this non-kosher meat and all this non-kosher elements and some vegan items too, uh, I'm sure. And uh, so they were there, right, that he could eat, yeah. Uh, but he looked at this and he says, oh, I can't eat this because this is not kosher. I can't eat this. It's not in line with, I can't accept something that's different. I, I'm not open to doing anything different here. No way. And the blanket goes up, comes down again. And the voice from heaven says, take and eat. I go, do, do, I ain't trying this. This is not kosher food. I am not, I'm not even open to this. Again, it ascends again. And happen, oh, well, I am, oh. all of a sudden he realizes what this vision is all about. As he, a Jew, believed in only the message of faith was for the Jews, discovers Gentiles knocking at his door. And he realizes, oh, I need to be open-minded to know that this message of God's love is for more than just the Jew. It's for the Gentile as well. Now you may think, oh, all of a sudden, Peter's got open-mindedness. He's ready to receive. He's, go, he's on the right track. And then what happens? There's another illustration within Scripture where he's in Antioch. And there he's being very liberal and associating with the Gentiles. You know, hip, cool. You know, I'm like, I got it. I'm hanging out with all the outcasts. I'm like, you know, I'm there, you know. I'm really, you know, doing my spiritual walk here, and I'm just doing a great job, and everything's coming together really good. And then all of a sudden, he's rebuked by others saying, what are you doing hanging with the Gentiles? Don't, you're a Jew. Don't lower yourself. Don't, don't ex hang out with those people. What are you thinking? You know, you know better than that. And he goes, oh, well, yeah, I guess you're right. And Paul rebukes him for his inconsistency. You see, being open is not just a one-day thing. Being open is open to everything, okay? So it's not like just one day you'll say, I'm open to trying uh, liver, but now I'm going to be open to trying anything and everything, okay? So I, my spirit is saying, I say no to anything, and I'm open to everything. 
and I'm willing to try new things and experience new things that might take me to new levels. But it has to be a consistent thing within our openness of our spiritual life. God wants to unfold some amazing things, and God's speaking to you right here and now. Oh, are you open to it? Because if you are, you will hear the voice of God unfolding in wonderful ways. Because how important it is that we become ready. And that readiness begins with saying, I am open to the things of God unfolding in my life. Now, we know this word ready over and over again because it's there within the Bible as it's spoke, spoken about in the ten virgins. Who, When the bridegroom was coming in an Eastern tradition, the bridegroom would go out and make ready for the celebration of the wedding. He'd be busy all day planning, you know, the decorations, the flowers. Oh, that's a gay man. Uh, but the bridegroom might still do it. You know, uh, the bridegroom still might do those kind of things. And he's getting everything ready for the feast and the wonderful celebration. And then all these virgins he's calling to come to the wedding. And they've actually fallen asleep waiting like, mm -hmm, how long is he going to take? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. He's waiting for everything to be just perfect. Now he's coming. And the, the bridegroom cometh. And the, wake up, wake up, everybody wake up. Get your lamps going. Get your lamps ready. Because it's, it's late at night and we need the light to, to lead the way for the wedding procession. Hold your lamp up high. And some of them would say, oh, I don't have any oil. I, I, I didn't trim my wick. My, my lamp is all smoky and dark because I didn't trim the wick and uh, there's not a very bright light. Can I get some oil from you? Can I borrow some from you? Can I get some of you? You see, this is the very illustration of not being ready. And that bridegroom is this wonderful, infinite, Holy Spirit anointed wisdom that wants to flood our lives for growth and expansion. That wants to teach and reveal to us new truths and take us. But some of us are asleep and we don't have the oil of new understanding poured into our lamp. And we're like, I'm, I ran out of new understanding. I'm working with the old stuff, you know. I, it's gone, and I haven't trimmed the wick ready for to ignite a flame, and I haven't, I, I'm not ready for this. You see, those are the ones left behind in the wonderful journey of moving on to the celebration of enlightenment, of awakening, of great truth unfolding in our lives. That's the story and how it works within our lives. It speaks over and over again, telling us and asking us, are you ready? So let me answer the question as you know you're asking right now. I'm so glad you did ask it. How do I get ready? How do I get ready? How do I get ready to expand and to grow? What do I need to do? Please tell me. Glad you asked. All right, let's go to that very quickly. First of all, what we have to say is that we must be willing to listen. Because the beautiful passage of Scripture says, so then faith, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So it begins by hearing. What is hearing? It's listening, right? So the very first thing that we need to acknowledge within our life is, how much time are we spending listening if we want to grow and mature? We want to expand. We want to understand the kingdom moving to new boundaries and new areas within our life. We want to stand faith that's going to be ignited and real and uh, we're able to face all challenges. How much have we been listening? Because most of his time, you know, we go to prayer and it's wah, 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 wah. we're talking nonstop, you know. Uh, trust me, growing up, we went to prayer meetings and people would walk and pray. Oh, God. Oh, God. We need you now. Oh, God. Give me that. Oh, I'm praying for sister so-and-so. You know the sin she lives in. Oh, God. You know. Oh, give me this one. Oh, you know this one's going through a divorce. Uh, going through a divorce. Did I say divorce? Yeah, uh -huh. she's divorced. Uh -huh. you know, and I'm praying out loud and I'm beseeching. And I'm like, uh, they were more sometimes spiritual gossiping. I'm not really gossiping. I'm just telling you how to pray uh, as, as I reveal these inside secrets, you know. But what I want to say is this in humor is that sometimes we're so busy talking at God. And the question is, faith comes by hearing. So how much time do you spend listening? How much time do you spend being quiet? Now, that's something unusual because to tell you the truth, the real church of God, the real church of a spiritual experience, would come and sit and be quiet. And we think, wait a minute, 
We gotta ring some chimes. We need some drums. We gotta shake a tambourine. We gotta make a joyful noise. We gotta shout up and down. We gotta timpani roll. We gotta have all this kind of stuff going on, don't we? we? Wait a minute. The real question is how much time have you spent in quiet, listening? Because if you want to know the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, it begins by just being quiet, taking time each day to listen to be still, to send no messages. Oh, I tell you, the first time people gather together in prayer, we have a program called Centering Prayer, it's aka meditation. Centering Prayer, sitting in silence for 20 minutes, and people say, well, that wasn't prayer. Nobody said anything. No, <laughs> how was that prayer? I mean, we didn't beseech, we didn't storm heaven's gates, we didn't pound the doors of hell. We didn't, you know, claim and stamp and, and jump up and down. We didn't yell and scream. We just sat and we were still. That was prayer? How's that prayer? You see, listening is, I send no message. Mm -hmm. uh, hearing is one of the biggest challenges we have in our world today. Uh huh. We get so distracted with the world around us that we don't really even hear. And you hear these people, you know, how about husbands, wives, partners, mates? Mm -hmm. You thought they were listening and they weren't really listening at all. Uh -huh. They couldn't hear. They Selective hearing. You know, take out the trash. Mm -hmm. Selective hearing. You know, all these kind of things in our lives. And sometimes that's the way within our spiritual lives. We, be, we listen so that God can get our attention. We sit still so God can get our attention. So the divine can get her. That's why we're quiet. Because the divine says, I got stuff to tell you. Shh. Let me talk. You know, <laughs> the spirit of God says, could you just let me talk for a little bit? Could I just unfold? Because all the answers of what you're looking for and you want to expand and grow your life. Well, you got to let me talk. Let me reveal. Let me show it to you. So let me tell you, though, that listening is not always easy. Trust me. Sometimes the first time you experience meditation or silence or being in the silence or centering prayer and being quiet, you're like, how long is this going to go on? It's just too still. You're like, this is like two minutes. Two minutes is like two eternities, I think. I think we went through this. This is horrible. It's so quiet. Could, and people say, could we have some music going on? You know, can we listen to something, you know? Maybe you have the radio going, the TV. Honey, that's not listening, you know? Listening is to be quiet, to be open and receptive, to be ready to receive, to allow your consciousness to be welcoming something. That's what's so important. So it takes discipline, it takes patience, and it takes persistence to learn how to be a good listener to the very voice of God. I'm going to tell you this, since the day you were born, the Spirit's been speaking to you. And many times in life, you'll say, I haven't heard a single thing from the voice of God. Why? Were you quiet enough to even listen to hear it? And that's how it's important for a lot. We should uh, keep on listening when we do not hear and keep on listening when we do hear. We should remember that we practice listening when we've heard something that we like and we practice listening and we've heard something that we don't like. Because listening is what's crucial for the expansion of the soul. When our faith opens the mind, let me tell you this, the mountains of problems, they become removed. This is the essence of we understanding that we're walk, li living the kingdom life. We're entering into this realm of the divine. God is all around working in and through and always for us. Wow, I'm full of the divine and I'm ready to step out in faith. I'm ready to now visualize and speak that which is before it is. And to say, I know it is and I claim it is and I live as if it is in such a way that that's my faith because it has grown so big. Then I can claim it before it even manifests. I know that's the kind of God I serve and that's the kind of God I'm in relationship with. So thy kingdom come. Is a big statement. Be careful when you say that because you're saying, I want to expand. I want to grow. I want to be open. I want to receive. I want the kingdom to come 
And when it comes, I want it to expand within me so much that my faith is great that I say to that mountain, be thou removed and it's cast into the sea and nothing is impossible for God. Amen.